Here, the wreck of the RMS Titanic lies on the ocean floor, covered by 3.8 kilometers, or approximately 2.3 miles, of water. No light reaches these murky depths, and the temperature rarely reaches above 2 degrees centigrade, or 36 degrees Fahrenheit. But still, life carries on. The huge steel plates that once formed the hull of this mighty vessel are now covered in rusticles, which resemble rusty icicles. Microorganisms which form the infrastructure of these rusticles take their nutrients from the iron that makes up the ship. In turn, the rusticles create a unique ecosystem which supports an extensive biological and crystalline diversity. The first samples of the rusticles were retrieved in 1991. This sample had an extremely thin crystalline skeleton, as indicated by the arrow. The following color slides were taken under a light microscope. They allow smaller details of the rusticles to be viewed. Collected in 1996, this sample was removed from the tip of a rusticle. It demonstrates the extremely varied range of color which can be seen in the rusticles. Autumn colors such as orange, yellow, and brown are strongly represented in the palette of the rusticles. As marine snow falls on the rusticles, different objects become trapped in the growing structure. One such object of an unknown nature is indicated by the arrow. As they are partially hollow structures, the rusticles have a composition which differs from the outside and inside. The outside of the rusticle, sanded smooth by the action of the current-carried sand, is composed of lipidocrosite. In contrast, the inside of the rusticle remains rough and is composed of gertite. Lipidocrosite and gertite crystals have the same chemical composition, but very slightly in their structure. These two forms are divided by a thin black membrane, indicated by the arrows. Viewed at a magnification of 40 times, details of the outer part of the rusticle can be seen clearly. This lipidocrosite is much smoother than the gertite that will appear in the next slide. These structures look like a forest of Christmas trees, but are actually gertite crystals formed by bacteria. The inside of the rusticle remains rough because it is not affected by sand and current action. Although the rusticles appear to be a solid mass hanging from the hull of the ship, this is not the case. Using electron microscopy, it can be seen that the rusticles are formed by chains of bacteria that resemble miniature rusticles. The large draping structures of the rusticles are composed of a multitude of microorganisms, sediments, and debris. Upon closer viewing using an environmental scanning electron microscope, or ESEM, the structure of the rusticle appears to be made up of miniature rusticles hanging off of one another. As the bacteria that form the rusticles age, the process of biomineralization occurs. Biomineralization is when an organism starts to accumulate one or more chemical elements. Indicated by the arrow is the amorphous or non-crystallized remains of a bacterium, one single cell. Not all bacteria found in the rusticles are round. Here, a filamentous or hair-like bacteria can be seen nestled in a crystal sheath. This crystal sheath is indicated by the colored arrows. Here, a short chain of round bacteria have become perfectly crystallized. Due to their small size, the bacteria are capable of forming chains that seem to defy gravity. Star-like structures similar to this one have been found throughout the rusticle. No biomineralization seems to have occurred in these structures. In the early development of rusticles, round and filamentous bacteria start forming a net-like structure. This net is highly porous, allowing water to flow freely in and out of the rusticle. As the net grows, some areas begin to experience biomineralization. Here, some amorphous round, or cocoid bacteria, are indicated by the arrow. During crystallization of bacteria in the net, several different steps are visible. Some of the bacteria are totally crystallized, while others remain naked. 
Bacteria that are changing from being naked to crystallize pass through a stage which is called amorphous. An area of amorphous bacteria is indicated by the arrow. Once the first layer is formed, a new set of bacteria attach themselves to the net. The arrows indicate areas of new bacterial colonization. The structures in these areas are significantly smaller than those that have become amorphous or crystallized. This micrograph depicts the second layer of bacterial growth. The size of most of this new bacteria is approximately one-third that of completely biomineralized bacteria. Typical of the iron oxide mineral gertite, these cauliflower-like formations are highly abundant throughout the rusticle. When the cauliflower-like formations are cracked open, they take on the appearance of raspberries. In the center of the raspberry lies a single bacterium. The blue arrow indicates the bacterium. In contrast, the white arrow points to the cap that once covered the bacterium. In contrast to the cauliflower-like formations, some bacteria form colonies that resemble tree branches. The bacteria shown here does not demonstrate traces of biomineralization. Here, a small grouping of microorganisms are wedged between several well-crystallized bacteria. Notice that this species of microorganisms travels in groups or colonies. As rusticles age, the holes in the net formed by bacteria become clogged with debris, including sand, silt, and organic matter. Eventually, these holes become completely filled, almost cutting off the flow of water from the inside of the rusticle to the outside, and vice versa. Some areas of the rusticle take on the appearance of solid rock. One such area is indicated by the arrow. This micrograph depicts two different crystalline forms. In the lower right corner, there are small needle-like crystals. The rest of the micrograph shows flat, elongated crystals which look similar to chrysanthemum flowers. Unlike the previous slide, these chicken feet crystals are extremely small. As there are only a minute amount of them, chemical analysis used to identify what the crystals are composed of could not be carried out. These microorganisms, dubbed pickup sticks for the resemblance of their colony to the children's game, are in excess of 20 micrometers in size. The origin of this colony is unknown, though it is possible that they arrived in the form of marine snow. This colony of bacteria is similar in appearance to the frost that can appear on a car windshield after an early morning snow flurry. This puzzling structure looks to have been the home of a microscopic tube worm. Although the tube is still intact, the worm has not been located. Unlike the previous slide, these worms do not appear to occupy a tube. Evidence found in the rusticle, including the two worms indicated by the arrows and the holes next to the larger worm, suggest that these worms prefer to burrow in the rusticle. It is possible that the bacterial colonies found in the rusticle serve as a food source. Closer inspection of the worm reveals a lip-like projection extending from its front. This lip could be useful for shoveling food into the worm's mouth or in burrowing. Gentle grinding of the rusticles revealed that spicules had become trapped in its growing structures. Spicules, usually made of silica, provide the skeleton for sea sponges. The structure of a spicule can be used to identify the species of sponge from which it came. This is a diatome, and like sponges, the support structures of diatomes are composed of silica. They comprise the most important group of photosynthesizers, using sunlight as their energy source in the marine environment. Incapable of movement, diatomes rise and fall as the surface ocean water mixes. When they die, they sink to the bottom as a component of marine snow. Once a dead organism has settled into the rusticle, chains and branches of microorganisms begin to cover it. Can you spot the diatome in this micrograph? As time progresses, even the microorganisms that become trapped in the rusticle disappear into its advancing structure. The pores in this net have become filled, creating a fragile, rock-like structure. In this high-magnification micrograph, there emerges the face of new life 
on the Titanic.